uh, apologies, folks. We're having some problems with the microphone. Test, 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 test. Okay, I think we've got our audio working now. Okay, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. I'm coming to you live from Daily Field in Boston, Massachusetts, here to bring you live coverage of today's East Coast Football League spring season contest between the visiting Seacoast Warhawks and the hosting Metro West Golden Badgers. And we're having Wi-Fi issues. Boy, it rain when it rains, it pours. All right, well, we've got our opening kickoff coming. Kickoff is away to the Badgers. It is being returned by number 33, Jonathan Joseph, looking for a hole and returns it just past the 25. Okay, we're dealing with a lot of technical difficulties to start this one off. I deeply apologize, folks. It is first and 10 for the Badgers as we are starting this game a few minutes earlier than expected. First play is a handoff. Goes for a short gain. Needed, come on. This is a jet sweep, and it's blown up quickly by the Warhawks. Okay, looks like for the moment we've got a solid connection back here at Daily Field. My deepest apologies for uh, this shaky start to our live stream. And oh no, come on, come back. There goes the connection again. All right, third down for the Badgers. Marquise Hughes takes the snap and he's got nowhere to go. Brought down for a sack. So the Badgers go three and out on their first possession of the game. And now they bring out the punt unit. Oh, 
Setting up to punt for the Badgers is number two, Eduardo Valesio. Sends the punt away. Taken by the Warhawks, number four. That is Sean Jackson, who runs it down the left side and is forced out of bounds. The connection seems to be stabilizing a bit. So hopefully that stays the case. as the Warhawks now take over on their first possession. Badgers went three and out, their first time with the ball. Now following the punt, the Warhawks will have it first and 10 at the Badgers 27 yard line. Shotgun formation. Snap is taken and it's a QB keeper. Running with it is number one. He's got an edge and he's gonna run for a first down. Number one, Thaddeus Brown Jr. With that run, we'll get a fresh set of downs for the Warhawks. It's now going to be first and 10 from the Badgers' 14-yard uh, line, I believe. Brown in shotgun, one back on either side of him, two receivers to the left, one to the right, hands off. And it is a handoff complete and into the end zone goes number 47 for the Warhawks, Phil Warren. So the first points of the game come off a 14 yard rushing touchdown by number 47, Phil Warren. And after the strong run by Thaddeus Brown Jr. on the first play, Badgers had to be wary of the potential fake handoff and a run by the quarterback. And that left a big opening for Phil Warren combined with some good blocking on the interior by the Warhawks O-line. And uh, a number of players jumped. We'll see who jumped first. And it looks like it's gonna be offsides on the Badgers. It will be declined by the Warhawks. They'll just set up to kick the PAT again. Readjusting the spot is the kicker, number 27, Steve Goodrich. Kick is up. And it sneaks through the left upright. Point after is good. So the Seacoast Warhawks jump on the scoreboard quickly. They force a three and out on defense and then a good return on the punt by number four, Sean Jackson, set them up in a good spot. Then a 13 yard run on the first play from scrimmage by quarterback Thaddeus Brown Jr. followed by a 14 yard touchdown run from Phil Warren. And following the PAT from Steve Goodrich, it is now a seven nothing lead for the visiting Seacoast Warhawks. As they get ready to kick off once again to the hosting Metro West Golden Badgers. Kicking this one off will be number two, Justin Cocroft. And it's a line drive 
towards the left side, and they're going to let it bounce out of bounds, which I believe will give them the ball at the 40. So the Badgers will have some slightly better starting position this time as that kick veered off to the left. So the Badgers offense takes over. It's at the 35. That was my mistake. You know, different leagues have different rules about <laughs> where the ball gets spotted on an out-of-bounds kick. Heck, even the NFL keeps changing their rules about how that works. As the NFL is going to have some new kickoff rules this year. So the Badgers line up at their own 35, first and 10. Marquise Hughes, the quarterback in shotgun, one back on either side, two receivers to his right, one to his left. And it's a handoff, barreling up the middle, and it's going to be a very short gain, maybe one yard on the handoff that time. Looks like it is exactly one yard. Second and nine from the 36. Apologies again for the in and out Wi-Fi connection we're dealing with out here. You know, sometimes the Wi-Fi here at Daily is good, and sometimes it's uncooperative. And today it seems to want to be uncooperative. But I am recording this while live streaming it, so I will post a fully recorded version of this broadcast later tonight. Second and nine. Same formation from the Badgers. Shotgun, one back either side. They send a receiver in motion from right to left. That's number 27, Dasani Houston. Marquise Hughes takes the snap, trying to roll to his right, finds the edge, finds a gain, and is forced out of bounds. Marquise Hughes showing off some speed and elusiveness to get to avoid uh, a loss of yards but couldn't get that far, only gained about two. So it'll be third and seven from the Badgers' 38-yard line. Happy to see folks showing support for their teams in the live chat. As we get ready for third down here. Just one back to the side of Hughes this time as they got two receivers either side. Are they going to try for a pass play here on third and long or a uh, timeout is going to be called by the Badgers as they were probably running close to a delay of game penalty. So once again, thank you all so much for tuning in today for this live stream of this East Coast Football League spring season contest between the visiting Seacoast Warhawks and the hosting Metro West Golden Badgers. As now we come out of the timeout. As the Badgers get set to attempt from third and seven.
And we've got a jump. Oh, dear. We've got a jump. Almost like that. Experiencing a problem with uh, the trying to fix it here. Apologies uh, again. So that's a few. His hand is up. Hughes goes down and hurt. And it looks like it looks like Warhawk still a bit stuck in that third court. And Hughes is limping off the field. Marquise Hughes, the Badgers quarterback, limping off the field as the Badgers get stuffed on third and short, and it'll be fourth down. I apologize again, folks. Everything is breaking on me at once. So it's fourth down for the Badgers. Okay. Looks like we got it now. Punt is away, and it's going to fly out of bounds. My apologies for uh, everything mucking up early in this live stream. I'm hoping things settle down. You know, I don't know if, uh, if things are getting messed up by uh, the wind whipping in from the Charles River over on our left or if uh, technology just doesn't just doesn't want to be helpful today. Both results are uh, plenty likely. So it'll be first and 10 now for the Warhawks as the Badgers were forced to punt that one away. Could not convert on third and two after the offsides penalty against the Warhawks. And now the visitors take over first and 10 at their own 45. Thaddeus Brown Jr., the quarterback in shotgun. And they go for a bit of a sweep here, running towards the edge and cutting up field and a fumble on the play as that was a bit of a rough tackle. I think number two, Justin Cocroft, was looking for a flag on that one as that was uh, the first guy to hit him got kind of a dangerous grab close to the neck area but either way that is a first down run for Justin Cocroft after a gain of about 13 yards it'll be first and 10 from the Badgers 42 Shotgun formation for Brown, one back on either side of him, two receivers to his left, one to his right. Snap, hand off, he fakes to one, gives to the other, and now taking off running upfield is number seven, gets brought down from behind and held on to the football after the hard hit. That is Quantarius Lovett who took that handoff. Out of the double back formation, Brown faked the handoff to Warren, then gave it to Lovett, and Lovett was off and running, converting another first down for the Warhawks. It'll now be first and 10 from the Badgers' 21-yard line after a gain of 21 on the play.
Fresh set of downs. Brown goes for a screen pass out to Cocroft. Cocroft gets tripped up on the far side. Good defense by the Badgers cornerback there. Fighting through the blocker and managing to grab at Cocroft's ankles before he could take off upfield. That said, still a sizable gain. Appears to have gotten out to about the 13-yard line. So a gain of eight from Cocroft on that catch and run. Second and two now. Lovett on the left of Brown. Two receivers either side. And Brown looking to throw. Scrambles to his right, taking off running. He's got some room. Jukes upfield, barreling through, and he's got it. Touchdown, Warhawks. And we got some flags thrown after the play as there's some pushing and shoving going on. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalties are going to go against both sides after that play. And so he's set up for the PAT. Goodrich setting up to kick the PAT once again. Cocroft the holder. Snap ball down, kick is up and it is through. Fourteen nothing. The Warhawks now lead the Badgers, following that thirteen yard touchdown run by quarterback Thaddeus Brown Jr. As we now get set for another kickoff. Cocroft once again setting up to kick this one away. First kick went all the way back to the Badgers' deep returner. Second kick flew out of bounds. Let's see what the third kickoff does. And this one's another line drive. Looks like this one's going to stay in bounds, taken off the ground. Taking off, running with it is number 33, Jonathan Joseph. He's got a hole. Joseph breaking through, taking off, running down the left sideline. Hurdles over a man, still going. Lost the football. It's still bouncing infield, and it finally bounces out of bounds. A huge return by number 33, Jonathan Joseph. Of course, fans of the Badgers will remember Jonathan Joseph was sort of a late addition to the team last summer. Came through with two explosive rushing touchdowns in the last two games of the season, including uh, an over 60-yard touchdown run. comes through with a big return there on the last play of the first quarter. We are through one here at Daly Field in Boston, Massachusetts. Our score, the Seacoast Warhawks 14, the Metro West Golden Badgers 0. 
But as we switch sides, the Badgers now get their best starting field position of the day so far. First and 10 at the Warhawks 28-yard line. Now let's see if we can get through a Badgers offensive possession without my technology going sideways on us. Quarterback Marquise Hughes back out there. Despite limping off the last offensive play, Badgers got to be happy to see him and have him back. There's the snap, fakes the handoff, screen pass is dropped. Pass intended for <clears throat> number 19. And it falls incomplete. So I'm not sure, but I do believe that is the first pass attempt the Badgers have had so far today. You know, I might have missed one on an earlier possession while I was juggling with uh, the tech, uh, with, you know, with the tech that was that was going nuts. But now second and ten from the 28. Same formation: Hughes and shotgun. One back either side. Two receivers to his right. One to his left. Hughes takes the snap, hands off this time, taking off and running, and might have got back to the line of scrimmage, might have lost one yard on the handoff there to number 23, Cuba Morales. Looks like they're going to rule that a loss of one on the play. It'll be third and 11 for the Badgers from the Warhawks 29-yard line. Being in opposing territory, the Badgers are definitely in four-down territory in this part of the field. So they got a couple of downs to try and make a first down. Badgers have to get set. The officials, I believe, just called 10 seconds on the play clock. Got to line up fast. And they can't line up fast enough. As I believe a timeout has been called by the Badgers. That'll be their second timeout of the first half. So can I just take a moment and say how, how grateful I am to see so many people tuning into this live stream, even as uh, shaky as the start of it was from the tech side and as shaky as it kind of continues to be. I really appreciate you guys sticking with us. Like I said, I'll upload a recorded version that won't have all these technical snafus. Well, with the audio, it'll still have those snafus, but it won't have the Wi-Fi snafus at least. But for now, I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you end up enjoying this live stream in spite of all of our uh, technical difficulties, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for all things Golden Badgers football. So out of the timeout, third and 11 from the opposing 29-yard line. Badgers appear to be coming out in a one-back formation. Jonathan Joseph on the right of Marquise Hughes, two receivers either side. Three. 
Hughes takes the snap, drops back, looking to throw, scrambling to his right, looking, trying to take off running, gets tripped up, stumbles his way across the line of scrimmage for a short gain. That gets him down to the 25, so a gain of four on the scramble by Hughes. That'll bring up fourth down and seven from the Warhawks' 25-yard line. Fourth and seven, they come out again with the one back formation. Two receivers on either side of Hughes, who has Joseph on his right in the backfield. They send Christian Alicia in motion. And Hughes getting wrapped up, trying to get the ball away. He cannot. Brought down for a fourth down sack. Among the multiple Warhawks tacklers was number 23, Bob Cody. And that will be a turnover on downs. So the Warhawks will take over first and 10 at their own 34. as the Badgers were unable to take advantage of the strong kick return. Now the Warhawks offense back out there. Brown in shotgun, Lovett on his right, two receivers either side. They send one receiver in motion, go for the jet sweep. Number 14 running out to the far side, trying to gain the edge. And he is finally forced out of bounds. <clears throat> Number 14, Brendan McKenna on the carry that time. As it appears to be a gain of about eight. Eight yards on the jet sweep, second and two coming up from the Warhawks 42 yard line. I got a slight correction from a helpful uh, member of the Warhawks to letting me know that number seven is actually Eric Harris. He's listed as number three, but today he's wearing number seven. But this is Warren taking off and running up the middle, barreling through for a first down and a lot more. So Phil Warren, who scored the first touchdown for the Warhawks, gets them across midfield for another first down. It'll be first and 10 at the Badgers, 43. First and 10, two backs, one on either side of Brown, takes the snap, gives to Harris, Harris jukes towards the middle, trying to force his way through, and multiple tacklers stand him up and stop him after a medium gain. From the 43 down to the 38, a gain of five on the carry for Eric Harris. And that brings up second and five. Looks like this time two receivers either side. They send one in motion. They're going for the jet sweep. That's Jackson cutting up field, trying to find a hole, bursting through. He's going to go all the way. 
Sean Jackson takes the jet sweep, jukes around tacklers, and goes 38 yards for the touchdown. So the third different Warhawks ball carrier to find the end zone today after Phil Warren and Thaddeus Brown Jr. scored the first two for the Warhawks. Now number four, Sean Jackson. As Goodrich comes out for his third PAT attempt. And this time the kick was blocked. Will it still sail through? Yes, it will. The Badgers special teams unit got a piece of that one. But not enough as Goodrich forces it just through the crossbar. And that makes it 21 to nothing in favor of the Warhawks. Oops, knocked the camera a bit there, apologies. Setting up for another kickoff. Cocroft setting up for the kickoff once again. Badgers got a really nice return from Jonathan Joseph on the last kickoff. Let's see what happens this time. Line drive kick over the head of the return man, and I don't think that's going out of bounds. He's going to have to pick it up, and he gets stood up hard. Head-on collision between returner and defender as the Badgers number 14, Deshaun Brown, thought that one was going to bounce out of bounds, took a bit of a calculated risk there, and it did not pay off. So the Badgers will be starting deep in their own territory after that one, as they did not get the favorable bounce. It'll be first and 10 at their own 10-yard line. And uh, some uh, fun facts in the live chat from Adam Ingalls pointing out that a number of uh, the top ball carriers for the Seacoast Warhawks today uh, are playing for the Marlboro Shamrocks in the summer season. So thank you for that, Adam. I appreciate getting more information. First and 10 for the Badgers. One back formation, two receivers either side. Hand it off to Joseph, cuts up the middle. Trying to shake off tacklers, does shake off a couple tacklers, but ultimately gets wrapped up after a short gain. Looks like it's going to be a gain of about four out to the 14.
second and six now for the Badgers. They're going to go with the same one back formation to receivers either side. Joseph in the backfield with Hughes. Snap, it's a toss to Joseph. Joseph trying to take off running, and he gets wrapped up in the backfield before he can even get going. Big tackle for a loss that time from, I believe, number nine of the Warhawks, Brandon Johnson. So that brings the Badgers, it appears, back to, I think, the eight-yard line, a loss of six on the play. Brings up third and 12. So third and 12 coming up. It looks like they're going to stick with their single back formation with two receivers on either side as Hughes making sure everyone gets in their place. Badgers have to make sure they get the snap off. They only got one timeout left for the first half. They do get it off. Hughes stepping back, scrambling to his right, throws one, and it's broken up. Pass almost completed, intended for number 19, but was batted down by number zero of the Warhawks, Cruz Comeritis. And that'll bring up fourth and long for the Badgers deep in their own territory. And so Eduardo Valesio will be punting out of his own end zone. We saw Sean Jackson have one strong return on a punt once before. This punt launched towards the far sideline, bouncing along, and Jackson juggles it a bit, but does pick it up, takes off running, weaves around a couple, now picking up speed, weaving through more players, heading down the sideline. He's got some room. Sean Jackson all the way for the punt return touchdown. Number four, Sean Jackson finds the end zone for the second straight time, this time on the punt return. And the Warhawks go up 27 to zero. So once again, Goodrich, who is three for three on his PATs so far today, lines up once again. Managed to force his kick through a blocker the last time. Trying to make it 28. And the kick goes through and is good. There's going to be an offsides penalty called against the Badgers as they didn't get all of their players set up in time, but it's just going to be declined because Goodrich made his kick. And so the Seacoast Warhawks take a 28-0 lead here in the second quarter.
So Cocroft sets up for another kickoff. Badgers getting lined up to receive. And this one's a pop fly kick caught out of the air and recovered well by the Badgers. I think that's number 25 for the Badgers who caught that one, Kyle Mitchell. Warhawks went for a short kick hoping that the guy would flub the catch and make for an easy recovery, but Mitchell got his hands on it well. And so the Badgers will start first and 10 from their own 44. Badgers have been struggling to move the ball so far. Hoping, and they're hoping they can find some kind of an offensive spark before halftime. They're coming out in a two-back formation, one back on either side of Hughes, two receivers on the near side. Snap, handoff, bouncing to the outside is Morales, nowhere to go. M might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe he pushed far enough for a gain of one, but I'm not sure about that. Looks like it's going to be a loss of one. So second and 11 from the 43. Badgers come out similar formation. Snap, they're going to toss back. Taking off and running with it is Mitchell. Mitchell cuts up field for a short gain. Kyle Mitchell on the carry gets up to the 48-yard line, so a gain of five brings up third and six. And that is going to be the last play of the half. We are now at halftime. Our score at half, the Seacoast Warhawks 28, the Metro West Golden Badgers 0. Touchdowns so far today. First score was a 14-yard rushing touchdown by Phil Warren. The second one, a 13-yard touchdown by Thaddeus Brown Jr., also on the run. Then a 38-yard rushing touchdown by Sean Jackson. And then a punt return touchdown also by Sean Jackson. That leaves us where we are here, 28 to nothing. <clears throat> I'm going to take a break for halftime and mute the mic, but I will be back for the second half of this ball game. Stay tuned.
Hello again, everybody. Back on the mic, I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan, coming to you live from Daily Field in Boston, Massachusetts, to bring you live coverage of this East Coast Football League spring season contest between the visiting Seacoast Warhawks and the hosting Metro West Golden Badgers. The Warhawks... Firmly in control on the scoreboard with a 28 to nothing lead. As we come out of the break and start the third quarter. Three rushing touchdowns and one punt return touchdown have given the Warhawks the score they have now. One rushing touchdown each from Phil Warren, Thaddeus Brown Jr. and Sean Jackson. And then one punt return touchdown from Jackson. For the Badgers, Eduardo Valesio getting ready to kick this one off. As we now begin the third quarter. Line drive kick is fielded. I believe that's Jackson once again heading towards the far sideline, looking for a hole, finding a hole, breaking through, picking up speed, and brought down close to the 35-yard line on the Badgers' side of the field. It'll be first and 10 for the Warhawks from the Badgers 35 yard line. Brown in shotgun, one back on either side, takes the snap, hands off to Harris. Eric Harris bursting to the outside and stood up briefly but stays on his feet, still on his feet, finally brought down. But that's going to be good for another Warhawks first down, although we've got a flag thrown after the play. Looks like it's going to be more on sportsmanlike penalties. So I'm guessing, yeah, those penalties are going to offset. And so it'll simply be first and 10 for the Warhawks from what appears to be about the 12-yard line. So this marks the third trip to the red zone for the Warhawks. They found the end zone both times in the red zone so far. Don't know how much you guys are able to hear through the wind guard on my microphone, but uh, the wind has been whipping out here at Daly Field. Again, we are right next to the Charles River here in Boston, and so that has a tendency to cause windy conditions. As those of you who have followed our past broadcasts of Badgers games surely know. Hasn't had too much of an impact on the play on the field as most plays have been on the ground today. First and 10 from the 12. A one back formation this time. Three receivers to the left of Brown, one to the right. Snap. Handoff is given, bursting up the middle, and Looks like it's going to be just short of the end zone. It will be first and goal.
couldn't quite see the jersey number of uh, the player who took that handoff. They're going to give it. No, they're not giving it back to him. Brown going to take it in himself for the one-yard touchdown. So Thaddeus Brown Jr. punches it in for his second rushing touchdown of the day, although the officials are conferring. Oh, did that, was that not a touchdown? What happened? Because it doesn't look like, oh, are they lining up for a two-pointer? Is that what's going on? I, I think they're lining up for a two-point conversion instead of a PAT kick. Brief bit of confusion there. I mean, with all the whistles that uh, were blown after touchdown was scored. I wasn't sure if someone had called something, but it looks like they're lining up for a two-point conversion. They hand off, and the runner gets stood up. Okay, I think I was right. That wasn't a touchdown. And with the runner not scoring on that play, it is now second and goal. Second and goal from the one. And we got a false start penalty against the Warhawks. On that previous play, I believe they handed it off to number 24, Delmas Satcher. Was not able to break the plane on that play. And now after the false start, it is now second and goal from the six. Brown takes the snap, gives to Satcher. No, Brown takes it himself, barrels ahead, and this time finds the end zone. Thaddeus Brown Jr. with his second touchdown on the ground. This time it counts on the six yard score. So now the Warhawks get set to kick the PAT. Some players jump, but Goodrich sends the kick up and through. And it's going to be another offsides call that will once again be declined as Goodrich remains perfect on his PAT kicks. And the Warhawks extend their lead to 35-0. to Cocroft lining up for another kickoff.
here comes the kick over the head of Joseph, and he's going to take it off the bounce and try and run this one back. Going up the far side, looking for somewhere to go. Flag is thrown as Joseph goes up the sideline and is dragged down just past the 30. But we'll see if this one ends up coming back. And it's going to be holding on the Badgers. So that will push this return back. So the holding penalty brings the Badgers back. It appears to their own 22 yard line where they will start this new possession. One back formation, Hughes juggles the handoff, has to pick up and try and make something out of nothing. And he almost gets back to the line of scrimmage, but boy, when a play blows up that badly, you're just glad to still have the football. And it looks like we've got an injured Badgers player down on the play as well as things go from bad to worse for the home team. Looks like they've got trainers out to check on the injured Badgers player who is still down on the field. And it appears to be number 63, David Dell, one of the Badgers O-linemen, coming off the field looking noticeably hobbled. And the Badgers will certainly be hoping that he is okay. As we return to the action, it was a loss of two on the play as it looks like they were trying for a handoff or a toss from Hughes to Joseph, but Hughes kind of juggled the snap, then juggled the handoff, and then just barely managed to pick up the ball and try and make something out of nothing. And at least managed to hold on to the ball, though he lost two yards on the play.
So the Badger is going to come out in one back formation. Uh, Cuba Morales on the left of Hughes. They got Joseph lined up as a slot receiver this time with two receivers on either side of the quarterback. Snap, Hughes back to throw, scrambles and manages to stay on his feet. It looks like he was wrapped up dead to rights. Now he's just scrambling, looking, heaves one deep downfield and no one able to grab it. Drops right in the middle of a number of players. No one able to make the grab. Looked like two Badgers players were moving towards the ball and might have been concerned about a potential collision as both kind of pulled back a little bit. And so the incomplete will leave it as third and 12 at the Badgers 20. They stick with the one back formation, two on either side of Hughes. And we've got some movement and this is gonna be offsides on the Warhawks. So the Badgers managed to get him with a hard count, and it'll be third and seven from the 25. <clears throat> Excuse me. So a slightly more doable third down for the Badgers as they come out again with uh, Morales on the left of Hughes, two receivers on either side. No flag that time. Hughes takes the snap, looking to throw. Got some time. Fires a pass. Complete dropped. Number 19 appeared to have it. Might have been broken up at the last second by Cruz Comeritis. And so it will be fourth and seven as Valesio comes out with the punt unit. Warhawks appear to have two back deep to potentially receive the punt. Sean Jackson with one punt return touchdown already. And number 11, Justin Choice, also appears to be back at the same depth as Jackson. And Valesio punts this one high and short. And it's going to go out of bounds. Didn't get a lot of distance on that one. And the Warhawks will have some pretty good field position to start this next possession. And I do believe that is the end of the third quarter. 
through three, the score here at Daly Field. The Seacoast Warhawks, 35. The Metro West Golden Badgers, zero. And as we switch sides, get ready to start the fourth and final quarter of this game, the Warhawks will have the ball first and 10 at the Badgers, 30. Brown with one back on either side for first and 10. Takes the snap, hands off. Finding a hole is Harris. Dragging a tackler and finally brought down. Going to be close to the first down marker. Looks like they'll mark him a yard short with a gain of nine. It will be second and one from the Badgers 21 yard line as we get another Badgers player down injured. So they bring out the trainers to take a look at him. Couple players taking a knee around their injured teammate. Again, you just hope this isn't anything too bad. I mean, this isn't one of those hot summer days where you can be like, oh, it's probably just a, a dehydration uh, cramp or something. He'll come back in, an, in a few plays. You know, at, at best, maybe you can hope, oh, it just hurts more because it's cold and stuff hurts more when you're cold. But, uh, Again, at this stage, all you can do is just hope, hope for the best. Player is up on his feet, but he's being, oh, he's being helped off. He's not putting weight on either leg. That is number 25, Kyle Mitchell, being carried off the field by his coaches. And and right now, I'm just I'm just hoping that that looks worse than it is. Oops, second and one on for the Warhawks. Brown takes the snap, pitches. The pitch is dropped, picked back up by Harris. Going to try and make something out of nothing on this broken play, and he cannot as he is forced out of bounds. The option play goes absolutely sideways for the Warhawks as they are pushed back all the way back to the 30. So they go from second and one to third and 10. A gain of nine is followed by a loss of nine. And once again, when uh, when you're on the, the opposing side of the field, easily four down territory. So the Warhawks will have two plays to try and get 10 yards. But this snap gets away from Brown. A flag is thrown as Brown, scrambling around, fires a pass short of the receiver. 
and it's an offsides on the Badgers. And so instead of fourth and ten, it's going to be third and five. Badgers had a chance to potentially set up for a defensive stop at what would have been fourth and long, but the offsides call instead makes it a third and medium. So third and five off the offsides penalty. And we got movement, and this time it's going to be a false start on the Warhawks. So once again, we are at third and ten from the 30. Brown with Harris on his right. Three receivers to his right, one to his left. Takes the snap, looking to throw. Fires to his left. Got a man, and it is caught for the touchdown. That ball caught by number 80, Mason Kaserman. A 30-yard touchdown pass from Brown to Kaserman. Makes it 41 to zero. So after their sixth touchdown and first through the air, the Warhawks line up for another PAT. Kick is up, and it is through. So a 30-yard touchdown pass from Thaddeus Brown Jr. to Mason Kaserman makes it a 42-0 lead for the Seacoast Warhawks here in the fourth quarter. So the kickoff teams come out. Cocroft setting up to kick this one away. Kick is back to Joseph. Joseph cuts across the field, trying to get to the edge, shakes off one, and still on his feet, but is dragged down just past the 30. Managed to make a couple guys miss, but ultimately one tackler just held on. New possession for the Badgers. will start at their own 33-yard line, first and 10. Not sure how much time is left here in the fourth quarter. This might be the last offensive possession for the Badgers today. Depending on how much time is left on the clock. There is no uh, active scoreboard going here 
at Daly Field. So really it's just a matter of when the officials say it's over. Looks like they've got a two back formation, one on either side of Hughes. With Christian Elissier and Deshaun Brown on either side. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Snap fakes the handoff and Hughes running to his right, trying to get around the tackler and he can't. Brought down for a sack. Defender did a good job containing the edge on that play for the Warhawks. And that will be a loss of four on the play. Second and 14 from the 29. It's been a rough day offensively for the Badgers, just not a lot of holes for their running game and not a lot of time for their passing game. Trying to see if they can move the ball a bit here at the end of the game. Looks like a one-back formation this time. I think that's Joseph on the left of Hughes. Two receivers either side. Snap, Hughes looking to throw. Floats one out and misses. Joseph was not out in front of him yet and a flag is thrown. Looks like the call is going to be against the Badgers. Looks like an offensive holding call. But it looks like the penalty has been declined, and so it will simply be third and 14. Two receivers on either side of Hughes. He's got Joseph on his left here on third and 14. Hughes back to throw. Steps up, runs forward. Now Jukes out of player, takes off running. Hughes going to get the first down and more as he tumbles ahead towards midfield. The Badgers with their first first down conversion of the night off the scramble by Marquise Hughes. It'll be first and 10 from the 48-yard line.
And that's the thing. Marquise Hughes, if he gets into open space, he can turn on the Jets and make some yards out of it. It's just a matter of getting him those openings in the first place. It's the same thing with Jonathan Joseph. You know, we've seen in uh, games past that when guys like them get the openings, they can make something out of it. It's just a matter of getting that initial opening. Snap, Hughes scrambling, weaving around. He's got some space. Hughes off and running again, and he gets stood up after a medium gain. So Marquise Hughes starting to find some openings as he gains five yards on that play. Cross midfield to the Warhawks 47 yard line. It'll be second and five. Hughes with Joseph on his left. And he wasn't ready for the snap, and that's actually Morales chasing it down. He couldn't pick it up, and it looks like the Warhawks are going to fall on it. And the Warhawks take over on the miscommunication. And looks like the teams are meeting at midfield for the final handshake. And that is your ball game. The final score here at Daly Field, the Seacoast Warhawks 42, the Metro West Golden Badgers 0. Well, Certainly not the way the Badgers were hoping their home opener would go here in this spring season. As the Warhawks controlled the game really from start to finish. Two rushing touchdowns and a passing touchdown from Thaddeus Brown Jr., the quarterback for the Warhawks. That one passing touchdown going to Mason Kaserman. Sean Jackson with one rushing touchdown and one punt return touchdown. And then Phil Warren with one rushing touchdown of his own. Well, that's going to do it for this live stream. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, my apologies for the inconsistent Wi-Fi connection tonight. I will post a fully recorded version of this uh, later tonight, and I will link to it uh, in the description section of this video to make it easier to find. <clears throat> that said, if you still enjoyed this live stream in spite of it all, be sure to hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all things Golden Badgers football. And uh, thank you to all fans of both teams for showing support for your team in the live chat today. If there's anything you'd like to say after this live stream is concluded, you can say it in the comment section down below. But for now, that is going to do it. Final score, the Seacoast Warhawks 42, the Metro West Golden Badgers 0. From Daly Field in Boston, Massachusetts, I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. Thank you all for watching, and have a good night.